let us get... I forgot my intro. I was going to say let us get into it, and that is not my intro at all. What is wrong with me today? I got like three hours of sleep last night, so I'm a little bit out of it. So if I had to read in this video, sorry! Hear my mom. I was like, I hear my mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. And me, you. Emma, Carson, Burn, Jan. Why? Why motorcycle? Why do you always do this to me? It's every single time I sit down to film, it's like, rum, rum. It has to be loud because Jan is filming, and that's no fun for anybody else. <laughs> like, stop it. Oh my goodness. Oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with my March wrap up. I read a total of 10 books, so without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I picked up was Stick Figure by Lori Gottlieb. It follows a 11 year old girl who develops anorexia in the 1970s and it's basically just her diary and her journey with this disease. And I thought it was going to be so good because, you know, I'm into that mental health stuff. But I ended up giving it only a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was interesting to read but it kind of seemed unrealistic. It's said to be her actual diary but I don't think that that's the case unless it's very edited. It just seemed too put together for an 11 year old. The biggest complaint I had about this book was that the ending was a little bit too perfect. It wrapped up too nicely and it didn't really make sense to the way that mental illnesses are actually usually dealt with. The second book that I read this month was The Coldest Girl in Cold Down by Holly Black. It's about a girl named Tana Back and she lives in a world where vampires actually exist and they are locked up in these six cold towns and they're basically cities where you go if you're infected with this vampire disease. These towns are populated by vampires and humans who are cold which means that they were bitten but they have not turned into real vampires yet and basically they have a need for blood so they get sent to these cold towns to protect the normal humans, I guess. One day after a party, Tana wakes up in a bathtub and she comes out and realizes that everybody has been murdered and while she's looking around for her stuff, she finds her ex-boyfriend Aiden and he has turned cold and he is tied up to a bed beside a century year old vampire named Gabriel. Tana decides that she is going to free everybody and bring them all to the nearest cold town in order to save Aiden before he turns. The beginning of the book was so fast paced and I found myself like enthralled in the book and I needed to know what happened and then it just progressively got slower and slower as it went on. Which kind of bummed me out because I was like expecting this huge exciting story and it just kind of got worse as it went on. It took until the last like a hundred pages or so to actually pick up again which was when I became more invested in the story but other than that it was too slow for me so I only gave it a three out of five stars on Goodreads. The third book that I read this month was Cinder by Marissa Meyer and I gave it a five out of five stars. I loved it so much. I don't really think I need to go into much detail about the synopsis of the book because it's been so popular in booktube for so long, but basically it's a retelling of Cinderella and she is a cyborg and her name is Cinder. It was so good. I'm a sucker for fairy tale retellings. We all know this. I could not put it down and I need to read Scarlet. I was gonna read it this month and then I just didn't get around to it. I love Cinder. And if you haven't read it already, which you probably have, read it because it's so worth it. I don't know why I waited so long to read this book. The fourth book that I read this month was Never Let You Go by Emma Carlson Byrne and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I just thought it was kind of out there and although it was enjoyable I was just kind of like sitting there like this is stupid the whole time so you know couldn't really give it higher than a two. It follows Megan and Anna and they've been best friends since the first grade until Megan does the unthinkable and betrays Anna's trust. A year later Anna decides that she's going to ask Megan to work with her on her uncle's farm for the summer and Megan thinks that this is the big turning point in their friendship and they can finally put everything behind them. That's when Megan meets Jordan, the cute boy who works on the farm as well, who Anna has already called dibs on, and things get a little interesting. The major problem I had with this book was the time frame. It takes place all in the span of a week and it just doesn't make sense for the events that occur in the book. Another thing I did not like about the book was how Megan never stood up for herself. Anna was completely the most bitchy girl to her. And she was just like, you know what, it's fine, like, she's my best friend, like, so it's okay to act like that. Like, no, Megan, stand up for yourself. Like, I don't understand. And the insta-love in this book. I cannot 
deal. They literally saw each other and was like, You're so amazing, I love you so much. It was like, No, I hate insta love, I hate it. The fifth book that I read this month was Down a Dark Hall by Lois Duncan. And I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads as well. I enjoyed it. It was quick and very fast to read, but it didn't hold my attention the way I wanted it to. The book follows Kit Gordy, and she is sent to Blackwood Hall, which is a school for all girls. When she arrives, weird things start to happen, and she starts to get this uneasy feeling. And she can't really put her finger on what is wrong, but she knows that something isn't right. When the other girls in the school start to have weird dreams and begin to develop these special talents, Kit really starts to feel that Madame Durrett isn't exactly telling the truth about everything that happens at Blackwood Hall. I can't decide if I actually enjoyed the book or if I just tolerated it, which is why I only gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. That was the same case with Never Let You Go. I just... I liked it, but then it, the more I thought about it, it was just kind of like, this was really stupid. So, I don't know my feelings on this book. I can't fully decide. Most of the time, the dialogue between the characters was so corny, it had me rolling my eyes, and I just, like, could not deal with it. And I was able to call pretty much every single major plot twist that there was, which the book said that you wouldn't be able to do that, but I definitely could. It was pretty obvious right from the beginning what was going to happen, so... That was disappointing. The book follows Willow Dean Duncan, who is also called Dumplin by her mom, and she is fat. And for the most part, she doesn't really care about this. She thinks that she is great the way she is. Then she meets Bo, and she begins to care about her body and what other people think of her. She then decides to enter the Miss Clover's beauty pageant, and this inspires other girls who are not deemed suitable to join along with her. I think that the book had a great message of body positivity and self-love, which I really enjoyed in the book. Although I loved Willow Dean as a character, at times I was really, really annoyed with her. I felt that she was kind of hostile towards other people, and they were just trying to be nice to her, and she would just turn it around and make everything negative, and it just kind of bothered me. It wasn't that hard to figure out that Willow Dean's sassy exterior was to protect herself on the inside, but it got to the point where it was just kind of rude, and I understand that that's kind of the point of the story, but it just, but like, it rubbed me the wrong way at times. I loved the friend and family dynamic of the book. I thought that it was probably the best aspect of it. The romance brought my rating down so so much. I thought it was gonna be this cute amazing love story and it just it wasn't what I thought it was. She didn't end up with who I wanted her to which was really annoying to me. I wanted her with I can't say because spoilers but I didn't want her with the guy who she ended up with. Also the pacing of the book was kind of weird. The beauty pageant which was like the whole main focus of the book didn't happen until the last 20 pages and I didn't really understand the point of that because the whole book was themed around this beauty pageant but nothing really it was all about the romance and I just I didn't like that I did not like that at all I also felt that there was a lot of skinny shaming in the book which if the message is body positivity and self-love there shouldn't be skinny shaming because the whole point is to put out you know like love and stuff like that and I didn't understand why the author made like bigger body types like ideal and I understand that everybody is different and everybody has a different body type but don't shame one if you're trying to promote the other promote everything does that make sense it just bothered me it rubbed me the wrong way so i only gave it a three out of five stars the next book i read was binge by tyler oakley i listened to this on audiobook and it was so good I listened to the audiobook because it's actually tyler oakley narrating it which made it so much more funnier i thought it was a great memoir and i would highly recommend it in audiobook format. I gave this book a 4.5 stars on Goodreads. I don't really know why I didn't give it a 5 star, I can't remember, but I absolutely loved it. I thought it was hilarious. The next book I read this month was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, and I only gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I'm not going to give a synopsis because the whole point of the book is to go in blind. I was able to call the entire book. It was really obvious right from the beginning what was going to happen in the end, so that was kind of disappointing to me because it was incredibly hyped up and everybody was talking about how amazing this book was and I just I did not feel the same way. I thought the writing was very well done although it was extremely repetitive which I hate in books so I didn't enjoy it 
as much as a lot of other people did. The next book is The Shallow Graves by Jennifer Donnelly. The book follows Josephine Monfort and she is part of a very elite family in the 1890s. When Joe's father commits suicide, she doesn't think that this is the case and she sets out to discover what really happened to her father. Unfortunately for Joe, what she finds out may be a little bit too much for her to handle. I loved this book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I've never really read a historical fiction book, so I think that the mystery aspect of the book really helps me get into it because historical fiction isn't really my thing, and I often pick one up and then I'm just kind of like, eh. I don't care enough to read this book, so I'll read like a page and then stop reading, but this one instantly had me hooked and I had to know what happened to Josephine. Although the mystery was very predictable, and I usually hate that about mysteries, I actually really enjoyed this one. I didn't find myself getting annoyed that I could call things. I just really wanted to know what happened, like really badly. I definitely did not call the ending though, I did not see that coming, and I really enjoyed it. And if you haven't read this book, please read it because it's actually so good. And the final book that I read this month was All These Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. I think this book was extremely overhyped. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a girl named Violet Markey and a boy named Theodore Finch, and they both find each other on top of their school spell tower one day. And after talking each other down from jumping, they get assigned to this group project where they need to explore the wonders of Indiana together. I can't really decide on my feelings of this book. I did really enjoy it, but then other times it just made me angry. I thought that both characters were really well done, although I think that the author kind of romanticized mental illness a lot, which was kind of annoying because the whole point is to raise awareness, not to make people think that, oh, like, two people with mental illnesses can come together and everything will be okay, like, it, it doesn't work that way. I really liked the dual perspective of the book and I really enjoyed Finch's chapters more than Violet's. I felt that Violet was kind of bland. Finch was more thought-provoking and I could relate more to him. I was able to call the ending, it was really obvious what was going to happen, which annoyed me because I really didn't want it to happen, but you could see it coming like a mile away. The writing style was very smooth and easy to follow and I really enjoyed that aspect of the book, but the romanticizing of the mental illness was way too much for me, so I only gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright guys, so that was the 10 books that I read this month. If you guys want a full review of any of them, let me know down below in the comments and I will do that for yes. Goodbye! Positivity. Yep, okay. Mm, English. That's good.